بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. وجه السيد فرد بن سعد الطوفي. سيدي سمعت منك. The subject of Iman uh, is extremely, this is our deed. Iman is a foundation of our deed. And when when you say Iman, when we want to discuss or cast some light on Iman, we have to understand this is the core of our deed. Iman. Can we have Iman by something that we see? Can we say that, Alhamdulillah, and a, a, a Mu'min that Sheikh Muhammad Musa is the Imam of the Madras. Can you say this? No. You only use the word Iman if you discuss the unseen. Not something tangible, something that you see. You know it, but that doesn't, it's not Iman. Iman has to be with the unseen, the ghayb. And to understand this, we just need to go over the journey of Prophet Muhammad and Iman. You know, for so long, the Prophet was looking around, what is this? What's going on? Yes, I'm in Mecca, but what is this? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make a long story short, he threw in his heart the love of to be in seclusion and thinking. And reflecting. So, as you all know, he used to go to Ghar Hira. And in Ghar Hira, he used to sit with days, and sometimes weeks. And at the, just before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Sayyidina Jibreel to talk to him about the message of La ilaha illallah, the Prophet said like, Hubbima ilayhi al He started falling in love, not hope, means someone put in his heart to love, to be by himself, thinking and reflecting. Who is this someone? It's Allah. So, you need to say, okay, so why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in his heart to have this kind of spiritual submission, again, spiritual submission to, to want to want to be alone with Allah. This is the first kind of submission that he has to go through. Until he reaches the point, if you ever go to Ghahira and you look down to Mecca, Mecca will look like matchboxes. And you look up, you see the stars and the galaxies and you see the huge things. So you start thinking about dunya, little, and the universe. So you start broadening your scope and say that this universe cannot be what I see in Mecca. What in Mecca, everything was not good. Then comes the major moment when, when the Prophet reached the point of so much, so longing, so much in depth and love with the Rabbi. I want to know, I want to know him. I want to know what is my mission in this earth. Who am I? And I want to know where I'm going to go after this and how I'm going to be judged. All this question was bombarding on the Prophet's mind until he reached the point of he became ready for the connection between him and the unseen world, which is Sayyidina Jibreel. In this case, Sayyidina Jibreel came in and I want you to pay attention to this. He said, he squeezed him real hard. And the Prophet said, I mean, it was, I, I, I felt it so, it's too much, right? And then he said, Obviously, we all know that Sayyidina Jabir does not know, he knows that Sayyidina Muhammad does not know how to read. And obviously, the answer for the Prophet Muhammad, I am not someone who knows how to read. And then the other squeeze, another hard one, Iqra. The answer is the same. Ma'ala al-Khar. I do not know how to read. And the third one is Iqra, but he adds something else. 
which you have to put a few lines underneath. He said, Iqra, bismu rabbim alladhi khalaq. Tell what is the physical squeeze and what is the word rabbim alladhi khalaq? Bismu rabbim alladhi khalaq. Now we said that we have a spiritual submission by loving to be with Allah, loving trying to find out the answer to these major questions. Now comes the physical submission. Here, squeeze until the Prophet became physically, physically surrendered. And then comes Bismillah Bikr Ladi Khab. Now we have Muhammad, you are not gonna, <coughs> you are not gonna read it. That like, someone goes out to read it. This is not an issue, right? We have a different kind of knowledge, different kind of approach. What is this knowledge? And before I tell you what is the knowledge, one day I was sitting in the center in the embassy in Patterson, and then the Imam asked me, we have few ladies from the neighboring churches wants to come and ask question about Islam. And the first question was, uh, how come Allah chooses someone who is illiterate to become a prophet? How come Allah chooses someone who doesn't know to read or write to make him the prophet of Islam? Uh, of course, I'm going to tell you what I told her later. But we have two kinds of knowledges. The knowledge of math, science, geography, chemistry, physics. All this is called Ulum Tajribiya, applied science that has to do with this earth. This kind of knowledge that we have no access to it. These knowledges we can reach it on our own. We can look at the sun and say, well, there's energy coming. How can I utilize this to come with another idea just instead of like heat, I want to store this energy. Now we do cellular energy and so on. This is a human accessible known kind of science. We can access this science. We can dig and find our geology. We can find chemistry and become scientists in this and that. This is fine. And these are the science that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to know. And it's far to fair that the, all the Muslim Ummah has to have those who are qualified to take care of that. But the so-called the real knowledge, according to the ulama, is the knowledge of Tawheed. Knowing Allah. This is the real knowledge. And we have no access to it. We have zero access to this kind of knowledge unless it has to come through Allah Himself. And obviously, Allah is not going to talk to us directly. It has to be through a person who has been well prepared, well equipped, well chosen to be able to be a connection between. This world and the unseen world. This kind of preparation, all the prophets have to go through it, including our beloved Prophet Muhammad. Tremendous preparation from day one since he was since he was a baby, losing his father before he was born. Then losing his mother as soon as he came back from the desert with Halima Sa'diya to be with her with his mom. And then losing his mom and going to his grandfather. A year and a half, losing his grandfather goes to Abutan. No stability, no security. Except Allah said, No, I'm preparing you to come to me to be, I am your only security. I'm your only source of stability. And going to become a shepherd. A shepherd. I have so many little sheep that. If, I, if I'm not careful, the wolf will come and eat some, then he, and then where this raising area coming from, some from the rain, who is sending the rain, it has to be this is and that. So he kept this is and that until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared him with the love of being in seclusion. Why? Because when the man comes, it's going to be a whole different story. This ayah the Quran says, Qalat Arab don't say Amanna, say Aslam. 
Islam is different than Iman. Islam is obvious. All, all your limbs go up, Allah Akbar, you pay zakat, all this is a physical issue that we see. But when it comes to Iman, no, there's something that is deep in the heart. When, when this Iman settled in Sidna Muhammad's heart, it became, and, and put lines after this, under this word, transformation, not adaptation. When Iman settled in Sidna Muhammad's heart, Sidna Muhammad was able to face the whole world. And if you remember, can some of you come sit here? I'll tell you why. Because I just need to look at you. Otherwise, we're not here. So, when Iman said in his heart, Sidna Muhammad became transformational, not adaptational. I'll give you an example. When Quraysh sent to him a top-notch guy to negotiate with him, they gave him offers that nobody can refuse. The first one, if you want to be our king, we will make you the king of Arabia. If you want to be the richest, we're going to collect money from every tribe so you become the richest person among all of us. If you want beautiful women, we're going to give you from every tribe, pick up the most beautiful women, it's going to be yours, right? And then he said, Afarata Are you done? He said, Yes. He said, Allah, you know the story. If he put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand for me to quit this, no, until Allah make it prevail or I die for it. Which means that I am I have a message that is transformational, not adaptation. And when a tribe came in and said Ya Muhammad, at that time he was suffering and his companion was suffering so much and they told him, Muhammad, how about how about if we follow Islam? We all and we are a huge tribe, but with one condition. That after he died, the leadership will be with us. To me, I'm sorry to say this, if I was in his place, I would say, what's a good offer? And I'm going to work on them later on to change their mind. But let them come because I need, I need support, right? I have nobody around me. But he said, no. This mission, Allah put where he wants. So from day one, there is unshaky iman in his heart. There is nothing called I'm going to compromise or adjust. Why? Because he got the connection between his heart and his Creator. And Allah, if we reach the point that we have the connection between our heart and our Creator, nothing will shake us, nothing will say that we will lose confidence in our team or in our credibility or what we have, right? The whole world can say yeah, Islam is this, Islam is terrorism, Islam, whatever it is, but as long as the Iman settled in the heart, we can confront the whole world. What is the main difference between our Iman and the Sahaba's Iman? The Sahaba had, the, the, of course, the, the teacher was Prophet Muhammad, and they, they, are, they, they got from the main source. The Wahi was in front of them. They, were, they have certain quality that made them a unique generation. But the interesting thing is, all the Sahaba had a man seated in their heart to the point when Prophet Muhammad was giving his last speech. When he was giving his last speech, he said, Ayyuhal Nas, Allah Allah, did I convey the message? All of them said, Nah, Ya Rasul. A hundred thousand were there. Naam ya Rasulullah. That was in the day of And then three times he repeated and then he said, Ala fal al min al The one who's present conveyed to the one who's not present. And you know what? The majority of the Sahaba took it to their heart. So many of them are very rare in the world, great world of China. We have Sahaba, Sahaba, not Tabi'in, not for generation, not third generation. Sahaba buried where? In the great wall of China. In the Jordanian River, you see Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah Amir bin Jarrah, Shah Habib, all around the line of what? Jordan River. And 
in Turkey, in Sham, in, in Egypt, said the Abu Ras and said that in, if they spread all over, why? Because Iman settled in their hearts and became a mission is not something that I can adjust. Hey, we're living in America and we have to understand the reality. This is so and so and so. No. If we do this, it will be the example if you go to the Lower River, right? In the Lower River, there's a very strong current. In the middle of the river, you find the big rock. On the little bit to the side, you will find the medium sized rocks. At the bank, you find the little gravel. What does that mean? The rock in the middle, the big ones, are transformation. They transferred, they, they did a transmission for the for the course of the, of the river to split, but I'm not moving. Right? The weak ones are pushed on the side. Why? I'm not saying the big rock has a man and the small one doesn't have because all the rock are Muslims. But the issue is this if you are if you a man is weak, you could be pushed over so easily. You could adjust and compromise your values and your teens so easily. But if Iman is civil in your heart, there is nothing can shake you or can sit and make you feel unsure. No. The, the, when when Sayyidina Amr al Ras asked Sayyidina Amr al Khattab, he said, Ya Amir al Munin, I need 3,000 from the Sahaba to come to me in Egypt. He sent him three. And he said, Ya Amr, these are three in number, but 3,000 in value. Why? Each one of them was able to transfer, transform the whole thing. And they say, uh, one of the wisdoms, a man with this kind of depth, strength in his event, he can put the whole Ummah back to life. Right? So at this point of our life, by the way, inshallah, I'm not going to talk that much, but you're going to give a, a good chance for questions and answers, which I like more than just giving you, you know, uh, what, what did I say last? Rajul Dhu Hemma. Rajul Dhu Hemma Yuhi Umma. Ah, fact. The, the, this generation of the, of the companion give the best example of what happens when a man settles in the heart. You really have to understand that this Umma was the worst nation ever existed. And all the neighboring nations were superpowers. The Persian Empire on the right and the Roman Empire on the north. And they looked at the Arabia as those peasants. And when, when the, 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 the Prophet sent his envoy to the Tsar of Rome or the Caesar, he told him, he told his God, give each one of them a janabiya or a garment and some or something like this and send them home. Why? Because they were nothing. But this, this event was capable of transforming this lousy nation to the best nation ever existed. Kuntu khayra ummatin nas. Right? So this particular item, which is called Iman, is capable of taking the worst nation to make it the greatest nation on earth. And at this point in our life, I do not know how much everybody is aware of, but quite frankly, at this point in the history of Islam, this is the most critical, challenging time of our time, of all our life as Muslims. Why? Because at this point, the target is uprooting Islam from every part of the world. And we can discuss this in the question and answer, but in every part of the world, now, it used to be Ikhwan, it used to be this, but now, no, Islam is a terrorist faith. Islam is, Islam is, why? Because this is a test for all of us. Are we going to stand up and make sure that this deed has men behind it? And when I mean, when I say men, I mean men in the Islamic term, which means men and women. Men and women. But here, the challenging times require what? to reinforce the, the depth of our Iman in such a way that we have to face the challenges, right? 
they define the iman like this. Something waqara fi qalbi musaddaqahu al-amal. What does that mean? Waqara fi qalb mean, like for example, if you, if you change your computer software from Windows 7 to Windows 8, it's a whole different software. And the Muslim woman at this point needs to change the software from adapt, adapt, adaptation to transformation. We have a mission. Wallahi, our mission is the, the, the happiness, safety, security for the Muslim and justice for the whole world. This is our mission. And we have to live up to this kind of statement. Our mission is not to change, to take something or to become rich or whatever it is. This dunya for a believer means absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And if you if you look at someone like Sayyidina Uthman or Sayyidina Khadija, just take Sayyidina Khadija for example. Sayyidina Khadija was, as you all know, extremely rich woman. Her caravan used to be as big as all Quraysh put together. And where all this went, she put behind the message of La ilaha illallah and the messenger, right? And when he used to go for seclusion, Sayyidina Khadija, the woman that was the most beautiful, the most respected, the richest woman in, in, in Mecca, that every man wanted to get married to her, and she turned all of them down, she used to go sit in the mountain of Uhud, just in case of the Prophet have any kind of emerging situation, I'll be next to him. Not necessarily with him, far away, but in the mountain. Why? Because for my deen, for the, for the message and for the messenger, I put everything I have behind it, right? Said Uthman, said Uthman, look at what a man will do when the person gets it. Said Uthman, in this past to Umrah, I got him like a friend of the bus driver. He told me, let me show you this. This is the water bill. Said said Uthman bought with substantial amount of money for the free for the Muslims. Why? Because the Prophet said, who is going to buy this water will, I will guarantee him Jannah. And I saw a huge sign that says, Waqf Uthman in Affair. Waqf means trust, something that he left for, for Allah. And so many hotels, and all the income, which is millions and millions, is for da'wah and for the poor. Like, this is Sayyidina Uthman al Affan. That if Sayyidina Uthman loved the dunya and did not care about what Allah wants from him, what his iman dictates, right? We will not be discussing Sayyidina Uthman. We will not be discussing him. Or Sayyidina, all, all these big names, right? Look another example of when the Iman goods in the heart. In the very beginning, in the very early days of Islam, the torture was unbelievable. And the best example was our beloved Sayyidina Bilal. Sayyidina Bilal, the, the torture was unbelievable. They take him in the middle of the day, the day where the sun is 140 degrees and put him and put rocks and then they spill the water, the cold water, what is dying from water next to him. And they say, and they, they say are you going to become kafir? He said, Ahad al Ahad. And Ahad al Ahad means the one, the only, right? Of course, he's given a clear message with one word. But when the Muslims passed by him and he told him, why are you saying Ahad al Ahad? They, they feel so sad that he is suffering so much. You know what, what his work? He said, I'm insisting on Ahad al Ahad because I do not know of another word that can make them furious more than this. In other words, like, I don't care about transformation, Ahad al Ahad. I stick with it even if I give my life for that. Right? Say this, Umayyah. Sergeant Ahmad ibn Yasin. Same thing, killed her, killed her husband, right? All the stuff, brother and sister, when the Imam comes in, the only thing that you see in front of you is Jannah. And the only thing that you want to avoid is hell, right? So, if we, what is Iman? Iman is basically the definition is Allah 
في الله في الملائكة في الكتب في الرسل في اليوم الآخر في القضاء الحلو والمر في الجدمت الله يمسوه في الأنجل في الأخيرات في الجدمت في الجدمت في الجدمت في الجدمت هذا هو كل من يمكن أن يمكن But you know what? He said, Alhamdulillah, we are Muslims, we are believers. But Allah, if, if we know what, what does it mean to be believe in the Day of Judgment, then nothing in this dunya is worse than this day, which is 50,000 years, I will be standing so scared, waiting for my fate to be decided. No, I want to go to the Day of Judgment, this 50,000 years, and be in the shade of Allah, and I want to be, I want to be as a believer, because the believers will feel this 50,000 years <coughs> as the time between Noah and us, or us and Allah, then I want to be among those, right? Fact. In this case, the whole dunya becomes insignificant, right? Nothing, nothing is worth, is worth that, that I lose the whole year after for this. That, is, that only comes when the, you believe in the Day of Judgment is to sit in your heart. That, that, the Jannah is called Ra'i al Ayn, I see it, right? In Ghazwa Dawud, look, these, are, these kids were 11, 12, 13. And during the Ghazwa, the Prophet used to take only the, the older one. I'm sorry, Ghazwa Bad. And most of them were, were standing like uh, yani, on their toes. Why? To show the Prophet would break. So he can take it. Knowing, knowing that they're going to be killed, right? And that two little ones, two little ones, say, Amma, where is Abu Jah? Where is Abu Jah? Why? Because they are from Medina, they do not know Abu Jah. Abu Jah is a big, big figure. Why? I want to kill him. Why? I heard him that he was cursing Prophet Muhammad. I was, I want to kill him, right? This, these kids that want to go for, and, and others, he said, Wallahi inni la ashum wa al jannah min wara'i jamal wa'ala. Allah, I, I, I breathe, I smell that the odor of Jannah paradise from behind the water of Prophet. What is this? This is Iman. It's sitting in the heart. Why? Because the Prophet said that whoever is going to fight them today and get killed, guaranteed Jannah. So everybody was, he said, uh, he, he threw the dates and he said, like, Bach and Bach, that's too much. And he kept going to kill and get killed and he became Shaheed. And the story goes on and on. Why is this? Because he meant it in the heart. He meant it in the heart. And what is our problem? Our problem is we need to work in our Iman. We need to work in our Iman if, if we're going to be used for the transformational message of the Muslims in this part of the world. Brothers, we are here. We are here not because we choose. Allah put everyone he wants in this particular area. And say like, Fanafi. What are you going to do? Allah, what are you going to do? Right? You are in an area where you are representing La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah as a way of life. What, what are you going to do with it? Right? Are you going to just live because you are living in an overwhelming materialistic society? We are, like it or not, we have no choice but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put all of us in an area where it is controlled by a materialistic values, right? So, if the only thing, the only thing that can stand up against this big challenge is one thing, that deep event in the hearts that can stand like the big rock in the middle of the Nui River, that, no, you cannot push me around. The tide is very strong, the materialistic tide is very strong, but I saw girls in certain colleges, they are like a giant, right? And I saw others that are so weak. You can push them around. They want to compromise. They want to please Bishafi. She wants to be so-called accepted. This is adaptation. Right? And some sisters took off the hijab. Why? Adaptation. But you know what? The powerful, the strong ones on both sides were the so-called transformation. No. You change the world. You change your thinking. You change the way you look at us. And these three brothers, one brother and two sisters that was killed in North Carolina, there, from what I heard, that they were transformation, right? In their action, and even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way he took them, it was also transformation to the area. Until today, this, we don't see it, we know it, but there is so many things happening in, in that particular area where 
universities and scan thing and they have a day for them and 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 why because they stood their feet and this is our deal and we are not going to accept to be a push over why we have the real thing and you need us you need us Allah if we want if we should when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying to take this this demand to take the people from darkness plural to a noah, single, light, right? And once this light of La ilaha Allah sits in the heart, you are there. Just to give you a, an, an example, and then I start with the question and answer. We were in a camp once in Pennsylvania, mass camp. And in the middle of the night, they took us, please come on in, everybody leave the bed. We can have a hiking at 2 o'clock in the morning. You have to say yes because it was supposed to be training camp. So we left at 2 o'clock and in the middle of the hiking trail, the, it was a night where there was no moon. And also in Pennsylvania, once, once you shut off the camp light, you cannot see your own hands in a night like this. And we are in the middle of the woods. And the guy who walked walking behind the morning charge, he wants to teach us something about the light, the importance of the light or the guidance. While we're meeting in the, in the middle of the trail, he shut the flashlight, right? And like, it was a horrible feeling. Everybody's clinching to the other one. Everybody's scared for these bears in this area and also a, a, a branch can hit you in your eyes, whatever it is. But after yeah, I mean, a minute, which it looks like it was an hour, but it was only a minute. He put the flashlight on back again, and everybody said, "Ah, oh, what?" And this is the iman when it gets in the heart. It it lights your heart, it lights your road, and in the day of judgment, it will light your road for the salah, so you cross like a phantom or like fast a uh, This is just a good introduction to iman, and then um, please feel free that we not only ask question and also comment. Sister can take that. The microphone is moving and the brothers do. Any, any comment? Any, please don't be. Uh, yeah. Or if you, want, if you have something written. <clears throat> Even if you, don't, if you don't have a question, pretend that you have a question. Or a comment, you don't have to have a question. Possible to, to avoid and evade doing it. 
that clear or good? Clear? If you know Allah, if you really know Allah, you would do everything enjoying it and to love with it. Right? Like the Sahaba, for example. And if you only reduce the Iman to the point of do this and do not do this, <clears throat> and you do not know Allah the way you should be, your mission will be basically to avoid and evade doing what Allah wants you to do. Right? Again, if you, uh, I'm sorry, you said something about Christianity, you do what? The six principles of faith, uh, all the non-theistic religion believing. So uh, I wanted, for example, I had a conversation with a, a Christian the other day, and I just tried to tell him about Islam, like we believe in all of them. Yeah. And uh, I just wanted to just get your, your thought on the, the messengers. <coughs> yeah, of course. We part of our iman is to believe in all the previous messages. That's clear, right? But you know what that means? We believe them based on what the Quran said, not based on the adulterated books. Right? For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said like the Quran means what? He's approving all the previous books, but everybody forgets means what? When it comes to a dispute, you want to know the real story, go to the Quran. Right? So, yes, we believe in all the previous books, and we, we consider those who follow the previous books and the kitab, people of the book. And in our deen, we have to deal with them in a, in a, in a very nice way and, 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 right? We have a long story about this. But when it comes to, to believe, to believe in anything that is adulterated and man put his fingers in it, no. We, we know what Sayyidina Isa came with, we know what Sayyidina Musa said, and what Sayyidina Ibrahim said. We know all this stuff, right? Why? It's written in our deen. And if you want to know how many times Sayyidina Musa's name is mentioned in the Quran, is more than the, num the number of times that Sayyidina Muhammad's name is mentioned, right? So our, our, our Quran is spoke in details about all the previous ones. We believe in all the messengers and we respect them, right? And if one of them, if one of them decided to become Muslim, Allah said that he's going to get a Shahu Maratayn. Yeah, twice as much. Why? Because he believed in two messengers. That's how much respect and we have for them. So, uh, for us to believe in, it makes us the only people who qualify to have to make peace in earth. Why? We believe in Prophet Musa and Prophet Isa and Prophet Rim and all of them. The, 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 the Christians believe in Moses, but not Muhammad. And the Jews believe, believe in Moses and the previous ones, but not Jesus or Muhammad, right? Who said Naisa or Muhammad. Which means what? There's hostility. We don't have hostility. We we want the best of everyone. But if you know the attitude of the Christian and the Jews against each other, you wouldn't believe what happened in Europe and so on and so on and so on. We don't have that, right? That's why the only religion of peace is Islam. This is the only religion that can make Islam prevail. We respect Lakum Dinukum Walid. Right? We have that. So, when it comes to believing in the previous books, yes, we do. And this is for a very important reason. If, if we don't believe, that means there's more than one Allah. If we have different books, then it means different sources. But if we agree there's one source, which is Allah, and he, he, he's the one who sent all these books, it means what? It means the, uni the unity of the message. And the unity or the oneness of the Creator, right? Then you become Muslim. If you agree with Muslim, there's any disagreement, you know, if we agree on all this, then we have no problem as a unit, right? We can unite our activity. Even you still believe in Sayyidina Isa, so on and so on. Even if you still believe in Satan and Muslims, so on and so on, right? <coughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just send it to you. <laughs>
So this question is based on, um, so we recently made a new committee, Young Adults Committee, and it feels like sometimes it gets overwhelming, the work of that's the work we have to do for the sake of Allah for the Masjid. So how do you like, um, like I, I know for example you're always going around speaking and stuff, so how do you maintain a balance between what you do for the community and what you do for your own Iman? So like for example in Ramadan, right, a lot of us are volunteers, like I know amongst this crowd, and when you're volunteering sometimes you, you don't get to focus on yourself, so is that a negative thing? Thank you very much. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at our Prophet when he said like, inna, inna li badanaka alayka haqqa, wa inna li zawjika alayka haqqa, wa inna li muridika, wa inna li inna. There is right for everyone, right? There is right. Fa'ati kulla li haqqin haqqa. The da'wa takes a chair. Your, your parents, your taxi chair, your study taxi chair. And if you disturb this balance, something wrong with your thinking, right? The other thing is, when when you have sincerity, Allah put tremendous barakah in your action, right? Yani, this is something that, Allah, I remember when, about 45 years ago, what is so funny? <laughs> 45 years ago, we were in the Islamic Center in Jersey City. There's a young man, his name is Ahmed Farouk, right? He was in high school and he was insisting about certain issues that was right. And everybody used to be, make fun of him. Honestly, until Sheikh Yusuf Khalaw came to visit once and he went to him and said, the Sheikh, so and so and so. So the Sheikh got up and he said, but he is right. And he transformed the whole masjid in certain area there's no need to get into it. So one little kid who was in the, in the 11th grade or 9th grade, I'm not sure, and he was able to convince a whole community to change something, right? So if you, and, but this kid, to me, he was very sincere. I see his sincerity in his action, in his talks and so on. If we are sincere, Allah will put barakah, because here's a, here's a trick. Are you following? The trick is this. It is not your abilities and your efforts. It is the work that Allah puts in your efforts, right? I think that I'm a rookie. Wa'idu mustatatu. Wa'idu la mustatatu. Allah did not say wa'idu quwa mu'athla or big force to do it. So no, whatever you can. After this, Allah will take care of the rest. And and. If you if you follow Sayyid Muhammad when he was moving from Mecca to Medina, he did everything that he can to avoid being uh, captured. But Suraka got there and wants to capture the Prophet and take him back, right? Then Sayyid Suraka says, Abu Bakr was back and forth, back and forth, and Prophet Muhammad did not look, look back once. Why? Because he knew I did what I can, or by Allah. After this, it's in Allah's hand. Allah took care of everything, right? So, say the Hajar. Say the Hajar, when she was running between Safa and Marwa because her baby's crying cry. Allah let her go back and forth seven times in the hot weather, right? And then, where's the, the, the break came, or the, 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 it came from under the baby's feet, right? But, Allah said, I'm not going to give you that, what you want unless you put your maximum. Then my, my help will come. You put your maximum. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send girls who love you and respect you and say, like, let's work with her. This girl is so and so and so. She is this and that. And then you're going you to have, instead of three individual community, will be 50 individual community, right? But in the meantime, you have to do the so called akhdabi aspect. Al-Akhbar means utilizing the means. What means? How can I make it attractive to them? How can I make them feel that they are producing? What kind of activity? And for example, before you go to sleep, get the calendar for the whole year. I put down what are the events that's coming, right? And I want from now to give sister so and so and so this kind of assignment and this kind of assignment. I'm going to be the follow. I'm going to follow what, what you're doing and so on. But it has to be attractive. 
and I, I follow up with each one of them after two weeks. What did you do for the committee that you have? You, for example, committee for Ramadan, committee for the Eid, committee for the Antikaf, committee for Shafi'i, all the stuff, right? You don't have to do all the stuff by yourself. Distribute some load and follow up and encourage and trust me. With sincerity, Allah will put the barakah in their hearts and they will love it because our deen is so easy to love. عشان كده شوف ربنا يقول لك وزينه في قلوبهم يعني الايمان حببه اليكم وزينه في قلوبهم يعني as soon as you show them something that is substantive and they will love it right and they want to be working with you والله Sometimes if I work on myself, 
the Quran, memorize, attend lectures, and, 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 or organize activities, right? By far, organizing activities is better. Why? The reward, when you are avid, someone who's taking care of himself, I'm sitting, learning, I'm going to lectures, kind of thing, the benefit comes to you only. But if you organize activity and get like say 40, 50 to, to benefit, then you get the reward of all the stuff. Yeah, I mean, this sister who organizing, or the brother who's organizing this, right? Wallahi, everyone sitting in this room, whatever impact that event has on this person, it's in his scale. Without you losing your, your, your reward, but it's in his scale to me, right? And I remember, uh, I used to have this, like, uh, I was a secretary general of the Islamic Center of Jersey City, where there was no other Islamic Center in New Jersey. And I was overwhelmed with so many activities, right? Organizing this, doing this, doing this, right? But the Imam was a sheikh, was a big, big sheikh. His name, Rahmatullahi, Sheikh Salimah Dunya. He was telling me, why do you come and attend the fiqh class and this is and that, right? It was, it was a big loss for me not to attend, right? But you know what? I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward me for what I have done, because quite frankly, the center at one point needs certain individuals to be in control, to be there, right? And I felt I'm needed in this spot, even though my heart was into learning and, and being. Uh, uh, he, he, he taught Al Fiqh al Maliki from A to Z. I wish I did, but you know what? Alhamdulillah, uh, uh, whatever Allah chose for me, I thought like I did the right thing. And I believe that doing, organizing, this, this thing doesn't work without bad. Mawta, yani someone that is good for himself is for himself. Someone who's organizing activity and getting the, the young, can see we're losing so many young people to the materialistic current that is drifting so many of young, especially boys. I see we have a disastrous situation with boys, but you know what? Wallahi, there is so much to be done for the boys, but we're not doing it. Right? So, no, I would definitely recommend invest in this, and inshallah, in the day of judgment, it will be so heavy in your scale. Inshallah. Any other question? Tayyip. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wal Asr. Inna al insana lafi khusr. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصلوا بالحق وتواصلوا بالصبر. I ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to put every moment in this time together here in your scale, and I ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to use us not to replace us. وإن تتولوا يستبق القوم غيركم. Allah ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى in this particular beautiful night in the house of Allah that He use us not to replace us. أقول خوري هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله